Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the T's. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the study manual for the T's. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The problem that we are about to solve is the one that you will find on page number 109. Please don't do it. Page 109. And today is our lesson number 60. Lesson number 60. Today we're going to do the very last problem in the math section of the book. Uh, then all that is left here are the two practice exams. And as I said a few days ago to you, uh, if, I, if I have the time, I will, I, will, I will solve the problems that you find in the practice exam. There are two practice exams. Each of those practice, practice exams contains 30 problems, so there are 60 problems in the two exams, and most likely I will do those as well. But as far as the exercises are concerned, this is the very last problem that you will see. Page number 109 is the end of the math section. This is it. We have finally, are, we have finally arrived. Today, as I speak, I believe it's today is the 16th, I believe, Tuesday. Today is the 17th. Today is the 17th of uh, 2013. And I started this, we started this, uh, we began this process on 23rd of August uh, last month. So it took, it took us about three weeks to get here. But anyway, we're done. So let's get going. The very last problem. It says, solve the inequality. It's a practice problem number two. Practice problem number two. And it says, solve the inequality. And the inequality that is given to us is the absolute value of 3y minus 2 is less than 7, we are told. Absolute value of 3y minus 2 is less than 7. Let's see what we can do here. Listen, before we deal with something as complicated as that, let's pretend that this 3y minus 2, let's pretend that uh, x equals to 3y minus 2. And we'll analyze it in that sense, in those terms, in terms of x. And once we understand what goes on here, what is going on here, then we'll simply replace, we'll simply replace the expression that is given to us, which is 3y minus 2. So let's first deal with x alone, okay? So I'm going to replace this 3y minus 2 with x. And let's try to understand what that means. Absolute value of x is less than 7. The question is, when is that going to happen? When is the, what values can x assume? What values can x assume that will ensure that the absolute value of x is less than seven. Let's take a look at let's take let's take a look at a number line. It will help us understand what's going on here. Here's our number line. Here is our zero, and here is our positive seven, and here is our negative seven. Okay. Let's watch what happens. Can x be negative eight? Ask yourself. Can x be negative eight? Well, the only way to find out is put it in here. Can x be negative eight? Well. Absolute value of negative 8 is positive 8, and is positive 8 less than 7? Of course not. Can x, can x be negative 5? x can be negative 5, because negative 5, absolute value, is positive 5, and positive 5 is less than 7. So what we find is that x can be any value. Well, actually, it doesn't say, it does not say less than or equal to. I just caught myself. Okay, listen carefully here. It does not say, it does not say, less than or equal to. It doesn't have the equal to sign here. If it did have the equal to sign, listen very carefully, if it did have equal to sign, then this circle that I just drew would have been a closed circle like this. But because it does not have an equal sign, we cannot include this point in our solution. It, it does not have equal sign, so this has to be an open point. This is how we show it. On the number line, it's going to show it like this. And it can assume any value it wants to be, any value at all in this range right here, up to here. But not including negative seven. Not including negative seven, because, because if, it, if if it happens to be negative seven, x cannot be negative seven. Well, I'm going to show you why. If x happens to be negative seven, then what we're looking at is absolute value of negative seven, which of course is positive seven. And positive seven, as you can see, is not less than seven. Positive seven is not less than seven. So we cannot include the endpoint. And the way we show, the way we show, if you wanted to show this in a number line, is by leaving an open circle. So this part, let's erase this thing so it doesn't confuse us. Now let's look at this side. Because the absolute value of x has to be less than 7, can x be 10? Of course, x cannot be 10. How can x be, 
Now, how can x be 10? Absolute value of 10 is just 10, and 10 is not less than 7. x has to remain, again, from here, again, not including, not including positive 7, not including positive 7 right here, but up to here. This is our solution set. I'm going to put it in a different color so we can see it easily. From here to here. Now, all we're going to do is, listen carefully, all we're going to do is, we're just going to replace x with what it originally was. We're going to replace with what it originally was, which was 3y minus 2. And now, what we're showing on the number line, listen very carefully, now what we're showing on the number line are not the values of x, but what are not the values of y rather, this number, this solution from here to here, it shows the possible value of 3y minus 2. This shows from here to here shows possible values, possible values of not y, but 3y minus 2. In other words, 3y minus 2 can be as low as negative 7, and 3y minus 2 could be as high as, well not negative 7, but up to negative 7, not including negative 7. And 3y minus 2, it can assume a value as high as 0.66, 0 0.6, uh, uh, as high as 6.9999. Do you understand? And how do we show this? How do we solve for it? In other words, what we're saying here is this. In other words, what we're saying here is that there are two possible solutions. Either, either 3y minus 2 has to fall in this region from here to here, from here to here. So either 3y minus 2 has to be greater than negative 7. It cannot be less than negative 7, because if it were, if it, if it were less than negative 7, it will end up going on this side. It has to be greater than negative 7, or or 3y minus 2 has to be less than positive 7. Those are the possible range. This is the other, other range, the other, the other segment. Because this, this, this red line that you see here are the possible values of this expression, 3y minus 2. And that value of 3y minus 2 has to be either more than negative 7, all the way to 0, or it has to be less than positive 7. Between this and that, it has to be more than negative 7, it starts with negative 7, more than negative 7, it, it cannot be as high as positive 7, it has to be less than positive 7. That's it. All we have to do is solve for y now. So let's do it, shall we? Let's add 2 to both sides. Let's add 2 to both sides because we want to bring the 2 to the other side. And that's going to get rid of our 2. 3y, 3y, negative 7 and a positive 2 is going to give us negative 5. And if you divide both sides by 3, if you divide both sides by 3, what we find is 3 cancels out and y is greater than negative 5 thirds. y has to be greater than negative. So this shows the value of y. This part, this, this number line that we're showing here, as I keep repeating like a parrot, understand it. I want you to make sure that you understand it. This number line, the way we drew it, does not show possible values of y. It shows the possible values of 3y minus 2 from negative. 3y minus 2 can be anywhere from negative 7 to positive 7. Which means, which means the y must start at negative 5 third. It cannot be anything lower than that. Let's find out here on this side. Again, add 2 to both sides. And 2 is going to drop out. And 3y has to be less than positive 7 and positive 2 is 9. Divide both sides by 3. And that tells us that tells us that in order, in order to ensure that 3y minus 2 it remains less than 7, y has to be something less than 3. y has to be something less than 3. Because if y happens to be 3, watch what happens. If y happens to be 3, then 3 times 3 is 9, 9 minus 2 is 7, we're not allowed to be, uh, we're not allowed a value of 7. You see, so it's an open circle. It cannot be 7, so it has to be something less than 3. Similarly here, y has to be more than negative 5 third. Negative 5 third, it cannot be anything less than that. Can you think of a number le less than negative 5 third? Negative 5 third is same as, negative 5 third is same as, negative 1 and 2 third. Can you think of a number that is less than negative 1 and 2 third? How about negative 2? I'm going to show you here that negative 2 is not going to work. If we had negative 2 here, watch what happens. If we have negative 2, okay, watch what happens. 3 minus negative 2 is negative 6. Negative 6 and a negative 2 is negative 8. So what we get here is absolute value of negative 8. And absolute value of negative 8, of course, is positive 8. And positive 8 is not less than 7. As you can see, Negative 2 does not work. It has to stop. The y cannot be anything. Y, the lowest value that y can assume is negative 1 and 2 thirds. 
the highest value that I can assume is all the way up to almost close to 3, but not quite. Same thing here. It cannot be exactly negative 1.2 third, but it can be very damn close to it. Do you understand? That's all. So that's our range. So our solution set is all the way from negative 5 third to 3. And this is how we write it. Where can I, when I have to squeeze someplace. And I'm going to erase this part so that uh, it doesn't get to be too much confused. Finally, we're going to write our solution. It has to be, the y has to be between this and that. Negative 1 and 2 third and positive 3. There you go. Negative 1 and 2 third and this positive 3. There you go. And this is called the solution set. This is our solution set. Y is between negative 1, negative negative 1 and 2 third and positive 3. So that was it. That was our day number 16. That's the end of it. And uh, as I said, we'll do practice question, practice exam, practice test 1 and 2. Uh, there are 30 questions in each. Uh, but as far as the exercises are concerned in the book, they are all done. All right. I hope you had a fun time uh, working with me. And uh, good luck to you on the exam. Good luck to you on the exam, and if you need more help, if you need any personal help, you know how to get a hold of me. There are several website addresses that you see here. Uh, just type in the website address, look for, go to my website, and you will find there the email address. You can contact me from there. You can call me or if you like, if you wish to get a hold of me directly. Uh, where can we squeeze it? The phone number. I left no room here. 1-800-222. 808-PREP, 1-800-808-PREP, you can get hold of me, if you're looking for a tutor, if you need more help, I'll be more than help, more than happy to help you, you can also get hold of me at PREPSAT at AOL.com, PREPSAT AOL.com, don't ask me why it says SAT, it says SAT because of course nobody has a, uh, can see the future, Years and years ago, many many moons ago, when I when I started my business, this was in back in 1994, almost 20 years ago now, when I started my business, I was doing nothing but the SAT prep courses, and hence the email address, and now I'm stuck with the bloody thing because you can't change your email addresses, but it's, it'll be hellish. Hence prep SAT, even though nowadays we do everything, I do everything here, we all the things that you see here, GRE, GMAT, SAT, ACT and of course the T's. Good luck to you. Bye now.